All right, so a little bit of a history. Um, this guy was very, very clever uh, and obsessed with um, planetary motion. The Greeks had figured it all out, but they had figured it out in a very goofy way with circles going around, circles going around, uh, off-center circle thingies. Um, and Copernicus didn't like the last bit, so he decided to displace the center of the universe from the Earth to the Sun so that he could get rid of one of those devices. He was also a shrewd person and published after he died. So he did not have to worry about defending the heliocentric hypothesis, which was counter to the teachings at the time of the Roman Catholic Church. Well, advance was made by a Danish astronomer, and I've been to Denmark and asked, and it's Tycho Brahe. Tycho Brahe. Actually, I had a Danish uh, AFS brother when I was in high school. So <clears throat> everyone else here in this country says Tycho Brahe. So, you know, you, you know pick, pick your poison. And Tuco was somebody who um, realized that they would make great progress, perhaps, by doing much more careful observations than the ancients could do. And he came up with sort of a crazy hybrid system. He didn't really like Copernicus's, but he borrowed some uh, ideas from there. But his system never uh, really panned out in the way uh, that uh, Johannes Kepler did. And, and Kepler was also a firm believer in the beauty of the circle. And he tried and he tried and he tried to get circles to work. And he finally gave up and tried an ellipse and found that ellipses worked. This was using the fine data that Juco had amassed but would not share until after he died. And then and then Kepler got a hold of the data and he started uh, developing his relationships uh, in about 1601 to 1609 and actually and beyond. Um, but they were, they were really cool patterns in the motions of the planets. There was no underlying theory about why it should be so or the underlying theory had to do with nesting like Russian dolls, different geometric shapes inside one another. And so he wrote about the great harmony of these celestial spheres and shapes that were rotating around. And evidently, I, I mean, I guess he, he heard that. Um, I was at dinner last night with an astronomer and I asked, so to what extent can you support the hypothesis that Kepler was a whack job? And he said, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty supportable. Um, but then he also claimed that this guy was also a whack job. And um, you can support that hypothesis as well. He believed a whole bunch of crazy stuff. He spent a lot of uh, his life trying, you know, as an alchemist, trying to convert base metals into gold. But he also developed some stuff that really uh, set us on the path to modernity. And uh, we've been obviously studying the developments of uh, Isaac Newton's laws. Uh, at one point, uh, when he was out on his estate and the debates in Europe were raging about what shape would a planetary orbit have if the law of attraction to the sun varied as the reciprocal square of the distance, and Robert Hooke came out and asked Newton that, and Newton said, why an ellipse, of course. And Hooke said, how do you know that? Well, I calculated it, well, show me. And Newton then couldn't find the notes. Isn't that convenient? Uh, so, but this stimulation got him to really think carefully again about work that he had done when he was but a kitty. And uh, the upshot was the Principia Mathematica and the theory that we have been elaborating. 